this is the kettled soured Christmas ale. Basically, look at the Great Lakes recipe. They don't give you percentages, so we kind of just put what we wanted in. We winged it. The old winger. And like a typical kettled sour. You don't usually get a great head. I was really hoping these would be glass. You get what you pay for. Those are like $3 on Amazon. That's true. All right, so we've got a couple beers. You know what? I totally forgot. Name of this one. The major, major award. award. I want it. Damn hell, you say you want it? Yeah. Yeah, have mind power, sweet mind power. The entire neighborhood was turned on. Oh, you should see what it looks like from out here. It could be seen up and down Cleveland Street, the symbol of the old man's victory. Damn, he won that. It's a major award. Yeah. The major award. Absolutely. The leg lamp and the movie The Christmas Story. I think one of them. All time greatest Christmas movies ever. Pretty much a Cleveland themed beer at this point. Yeah, true. That's very true. Like you said, we modeled this one off of the Great Lakes Christmas sale. Lower ABV, we just knocked everything down. Great Lakes, they published the Grain Bill online. Yeah, not percentages, but not at, percentages. Least, at least the ingredients. So, yeah. so uh, pale malt, uh, white wheat malt, caramel, 40, special roast, roasted barley. And then honey. Honey. So we mashed. Soured with uh, White Labs, WLP677, Lactobacillus bacteria. We did. We had a problem with that. We did. We had a problem. This is our second sour with that, with Strange. WLP677. Yeah. First one went off without a hitch. The pumpkin beer actually it was phenomenal. Great beer. A plus, great job, 100%. This one though, we had some fermentation occur during the souring process. Our gravity pre lacto was 1042. Mm -hmm. We came back a couple days later, gravity had dropped to 1030. With the pumpkin, we had zero change in gravity. And the change in gravity while souring is like, that's, a, that's indicative of Bread something, yeah, something. generally a Britannomyces or something else. Britannomyces. Yeah, so we just rolled with it. We, just, we went with it. It didn't taste, it tasted okay at that point. It's tough to we tell. We just did like a Kettle tiny, sour tiny beers don't taste. taste. Yeah. Phenomenal at that point, in my opinion, anyway. But went with it. Yeah, went with it. Finished up the brew day. Finished up the brew day. Did the boil. Added some ginger. Added some cinnamon. Added, added some honey. honey. Cooled it down. Pitched some USO5. I think we did two packs of USO5. Yeah. Post boil gravity 1046. Final gravity 1013. ABV 4.33. In that ballpark, yeah. Shall we taste it? Yeah. This one, I, like I haven't. Your, I like your sweater, by the way. It's pretty fancy. I wore it, wore it to dinner on Saturday. It's pretty rad. Dude, here's the thing. This is like my 10th time tasting this beer. It tastes amazing to me right now, but I have a cold. I have a cold and I just, I'm not uh, tasting. I think it's a little bit undercarved. It's not flat, but could probably use a little, there we go. little boost. Now I'm, now I'm getting the, um, I'm getting kind of what I was getting before. Up front it's great, a little bit of sourness. Yep. You get a little bit of that honey, which is yep. actually really nice. Yep. But at the very end, yep. like back of your throat, yep. you get straight band-aid. Like someone put some band-aids right up but your it's, nose. It's there, it's yeah. a small percent. You can get one or two sips in before you notice it, I feel like. And then that third sip, it's just kind of cloying on the back of the throat there. Right. It's, it's a, not terrible. But it's definitely a defect, and yeah. I'm gonna put that on the bread more than anything. Yeah. So, or, right. Well, yeah, assuming it's bread, because that's kind of can be one of the things that comes from it. Yeah. From my understanding. Yeah. So the high likelihood that it was Britannomyces. The souring lacto that we used, according to the website Milk the Funk, which is the website dedicated to sour beers. Yeah, and I think it might have been in like one of the Facebook groups. Okay. Where I read read a lot of people having issues. Yeah, folks have complained about WLP six seventy seven being contaminated with Britannomyces. I'm not saying that it is, but and I'm just saying this I don't, is what we read. Yeah, and from what my understanding is, like the new the new packs, they don't have an issue with like the this one here. This is from my from what I've read and gathered is these don't have issues. Anything packed in these new style. 
uh, pure pitch. Pure pitch, right. It seems to be the old style vials, yeah. and it probably has to do, I'm assuming, with some kind of sanitation they can do with this new format would right. be my... They actually culture and grow that inside of that. Oh, uh, you can only get that in vials still, so... Right. I'm assuming at some point they'll probably switch over, but... Right. WLP 677, only available in the vials... At this point, ...which have yeah. apparently a higher risk of contamination. Yeah. Again, we're not professional brewers. No. This is no, by no means a clean room. Could have been our fault. We were dicking around for who knows how long yeah. with our pH meter trying to get that to work. We but if I don't have to it. take blame, I'm not taking it. <laughs> Just assuming that there was a Brett uh, contamination. Here's Whether it came from them or us, who cares? Yeah, there's a great article on Craft Beer and Brewing's website about Britannomyces. And they run through all of the desirable and undesirable flavor compounds associated with Britannomyces. On the undesirable side, what they mention is two of the phenolic compounds most closely associated with Britannomyces are 4 ethylphenol described as a sweaty horse blanket, barnyard, or Band-Aid, which is where we're getting. Yeah. And then the four uh, ethyl guaiacol, I have no idea, I'm not a chemist, often characterized as smoky or spicy. I'm not really getting that, but... No, and the Band-Aid is definitely there. It's I've definitely had beers that had way more yeah. Band-Aid-y. It's definitely there, since we didn't put any bittering hops in or anything like that. Right. I almost wonder if we put some oak in it or even dry hopped it to get a little bit of bitterness. Because instead of having that band-aid finish at the end, right. you might have like a little bitterness or oak or, or something. Yeah. I mean, I'll drink this. Like, right. It's not... I'll drink it with the cold because I can't taste it as much. But otherwise, well, I've done a little bit of reading on the phenolic yeah. contaminator, the phenolic defect. And it, unfortunately, it's not one of those things that it won't improves go away. with age. No. It just doesn't go away. You can try and mask it a little bit. Yeah, right. Because like, to me, it's there, but it's not, at least for my palate, I feel like it's not at a point where it really bothers me. Yeah. If that makes sense. Right. But I don't, I think your palate's a lot more sensitive to it because right. you, you tasted it immediately and I couldn't taste it for like three or four days. Right. We mentioned our issue with uh, the fermentation during the souring process. And we got a couple of comments on the uh, related to that on our YouTube video. User JDTG commented, give Good Belly straight, yeah, straight shot a go. I've used them with a lot of success. Made a very clean sour, but can't quite get tart. Just ballparking, but probably 3.3 in 72 hours. Okay. Yeah, we'll give it a try. 3.3 yeah. is actually pretty low on the pH scale, and at that point, I mean, I feel like you've moved beyond tart into definitely sour, so maybe... Yeah, because we are at 3.43. Yeah, and this is more sour than our... Um, the other one. And the Good Belly, from what I've read, I have a bunch of the pills, but they make like a shot, which I believe is just a, a, a probiotic drink, and that's what folks are using. You can use pills as well. Gotcha. So I, I think the next time we do one, if try, we do one, we'll do that. those, yeah. yeah. James Ryan says, hey guys, homebrew here. I also heard about the contamination issues with that brand of lacto. I've been using Omega yeast for my normal fermentation needs, but this time around for a sour I brewed, I used Omega's Lacto Blend. I am incredibly pleased with how my brew came out. Not paid to say this. I would check them out. Cheers. Yeah. And I will check them out. I've definitely heard of them. Ingot Nam said, Moon Sea Forever. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ingot. <laughs> Great comment. If you could elaborate on that, I think it would help us. Moon Sea Forever. I don't know. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Ingot. I think if it didn't have that band-aid at the end, she'd be all right. With the cold, this is amazing. Because it, it's, you know, so much of the flavor comes from your nose. Yeah, from your What you can smell. smell yeah. I can't smell a dang thing right now. And it's... And it's it, it tastes great without that. And to me, it's, that on it's the nose. so subtle. For a second kettle sour, I feel all right about it. You know, we only dropped 10 points between the first mash and the sour. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. During the, the, the souring process, we only dropped like 10 points. We started at 10.42 down to 10.30. So Brett didn't have a ton of time. It's only three days. Yeah, yeah, it didn't have a ton of time to just completely yeah. dominate boiled the beer. And then we it. boiled it, so whatever was in there would have been killed. Yeah. And then added to the USO5. Right. So it's been undrinkable for me up until now. And it was young. Yeah. We, we kegged this pretty early and it had, you know, it's got roasted malt, a roasted barley and special roast. Yeah. If we were to do it again and just had a clean lacto and 
right. follow the same procedure. I mean, this is yeah. I kind of want to do it again. A good baseline. Cut, I, cut the lacto off a little sooner, so it's um, yeah, and may, I, might more just tart want, than sour. I almost feel like maybe just a tiny bit of hops to get a little bitterness because it's kind of sweet with the honey and the crystal malt. So I feel like it's a little bit sweet. Give it a try. Give it a try. Uh, I think I was going to mention the holidays are here. We brew beer. But we also sell things, actually. <laughs> quick shameless promotion. We have these pretty sweet spice kits. Apple pie, firebomb, peach pie, alcohol flavoring kits. Check them out on our website. And we even have videos about them on YouTube, I do believe. They're really, they're really good. Very cool Christmas gifts. Great little stocking stuffer. Yeah. Anyway, happy holidays. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, Festivus. Festivus. Uh, I don't know. Mainly Festivus. Other. Mostly Festivus. And we'll see you or probably 2018 uh, we'll see yeah stay tuned for Clawhammer's Christmas special 2018 <laughs> thus concludes 2017's Christmas special yes, yes.